those of you who don't know me, and there's a few new faces I've seen in here this morning, my name is Christopher Timms. Uh, summation is because I got kicked out of every spiritual organization I ever tried to join and be a part of, back in 1988, I started my own organization called the Order of the Blue Star. Since then, I've been traveling around the world, uh, teaching people things that can't be taught and that they already really know anyway. So it's rather a paradoxical type of a life. Uh, I grew up in the Northeast, in Delaware. Uh, my father was a contractor and a builder. I grew up in the building trades, was a build, have been a builder myself on and off throughout my life. Um, I've been a professional musician, a rock drummer, and a violinist. I started playing the drums when I was 10, the violin when I was six. So whether it was Vivaldi or Rush or Metallica, <laughs> you know, that was me. Man, driving my mom absolutely insane. My mother was a saint, absolutely, absolutely saint. If it wasn't a squeaky violin, it was just wailing away. You know, with everything turned up as loud as it could possibly be. Right. Yeah, but, you know, but that's the way to go, you know. And so from there, I didn't really want to take over the contracting business. Thought I wanted to become a chiropractor. I couldn't play music professionally because I didn't want to deal with the scene. I was playing up and down the East Coast with different, different bands and uh, studio and live and... I'm, I'm a vegan vegetarian for over 30 some years. I, I can't do the, the scene. It just, it just was killing me, you know? And um, just to share with you something really interesting, the culmination of my career as a musician, I was playing with this really good kick butt band and we were playing in this big biker bar in uh, Jersey. And there were people in the audience that had come to see us because they were going to take you up to the next level where then you're warm up for the big bands that come into the area, right? We were a combination of original material and just classic stuff, rock. Playing really good music. We put together a special set of music for the people who were listening. You know, we were just wailing away. And to, en to end the night, playing a song by Free, All Right Now. You know, and everybody kind of comes together for this simple, simple little song. You can't mess it up. Well, the lead guitar player was an amazing instrumentalist from the Guitar Institute out of California, Dean Wilson, just an amazing guy. But he was a raging alcoholic, and he could only play when he was out of his mind, drunk. And he was playing perfect all night, but he had that one too many drinks. And halfway through the song, as we're up on stage, about, you know, about that, that high up, you know, the audience is out there, everybody's dancing, having fun. I'm playing and I'm watching this happen. And, and, he's, and I'm thinking, oh, no. Because I was the stabilizing influence. They called me Sparky in the band. Because I was just Mr. Rocksteady. I was the set up and tear down guy. I was always, you know. And this is going on. This is relevant to today's teaching. Don't worry, okay? <laughs> no, please, don't worry. Um, as we're experiencing the, the, the bridge in the song, coming back into the end, he ends the bridge going into the last verse by stopping. His hands fall from the guitar. He spins around with this beautiful strat around him, Stratocaster, and he just falls forward and he wasn't falling into people to carry him he wasn't falling into people to carry him okay that wasn't going on then okay you know what ha what happened is that he hit the guitar hit i was more worried about the guitar i wanted to kill him and so the band stopped and i looked at everybody in the band i said i quit you're it and i grabbed my big set of gretsch drums Packed them up, see ya. And I didn't play drums for over a decade. And, but that was life, saying, you can choose this, <laughs> or you can choose this. You know, so, I'm glad I chose this. <laughs> you know. So, it's wonderful to be here, you know, and we've known so many of you for such a long time. 
And I don't do much in the local area. So much these years in spiritual life has shifted to an online presence, you know, where I teach uh, live video streaming to different parts of the world, uh, number of nights a week, most weekends. But we really wanted to take this time to serve all of you and to be a part of the community. And I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity. So today, I'm going to speak about something that I think is relevant in all of our lives, and it's relevant in the world today. We're going to talk about how we move from chaos to coherence. Does that sound relevant? Yeah. Okay. So let's begin. Hey, brother. As you listen to the sound of this beautiful Tibetan bell, allow it to remind you of the sound. The sound that rests within you. Listening to the sound that silence makes. There is an essence that binds and sustains and is all life. This essence, this living presence, is the oneness that you are. The oneness that you are. Shapeless, formless, and eternal are you, with no boundary, with no container. You were never born, so you can never die. This is the oneness that you are. This is the oneness that you are. With nothing to grow into and nothing to become for you are all life. You are all life. There is no separation between you and me, the air that we breathe, the sun that shines upon us or the earth that we walk on. No separation at all. All life is one. Always has been and always will be. And this oneness that is the air and the earth, this oneness that is the seasons for the harvest and the laughter of the children, this is the oneness that you are. This is the oneness that you are. This cannot be taught to you, for this is not to be understood. You see, this is only to be experienced, appreciated, and realized. Accept this and be free. Accept this and be free. Accept this. All of this. All of this. And be. Just be. Just be. Just be. Just be. Or, as the apostles John, George, Paul, and Ringo would have said, <laughs> whisper words of wisdom, let it be, just let it be. I imagine there was a please in front of that too. <coughs> you know, please. So, from chaos to coherence. You don't have to be Kreskin to look around. Now I know I'm dating myself to use the word Kreskin, okay? But just deal, okay? Just deal, all right? So, or I could say the, the amazing Karnak. Remember Johnny Carson, you know, all that, okay? All right, so, but anyway, you look around the world, everything is just in upheaval. Everything is in upheaval. And people are afraid. People are in tumult, all this stuff is going on, and people are afraid because they don't see the big picture. 
They just see a, li a little picture. And of course, the worst thing we can do is be afraid in any circumstance in life, but yet that's the normal reaction when we don't see a big picture. When we see our little picture, then we become separate and alone. Fear is the normal result. Does that make sense? Now, <clears throat> fear has, or fear, chaos has a bad rap. People think that chaos, the chaos going on all around us, is bad. That we gotta somehow fix this chaos. We don't like chaos in our lives. When your life is in complete and total chaos, do you enjoy it? No, no. And that's, do you know why you don't enjoy it? Because your mind thinks it knows how everything's supposed to be. So your mind tries to rearrange the chaos, finding order within the apparent randomity or chaos of your universe. Make sense, right? So because the mind is the great administrator to everything, the mind leads the way in almost everyone, coupled with the emotions, Boy, those two have a great time railroading our lives, don't they? The mind and the emotions, you know, as we go, go through things. So let's look at chaos a little bit differently. In my experiences throughout my spiritual life, and playing music was really the portal through which I began to experience this. As you move in consciousness from a person doing something to that state of, of kind of transitioning being, then you move to a state that I call aring. You move from doing to being to aring. It's the great I am. So now what does this mean? This means that when in life, doesn't matter what you're doing, what matters is how you're doing it. It can be doing dishes, it can be playing music, it can be anything. When you set yourself up to be in a state of doing, then the mind and the emotions, your memories are leading the way. And as you, you apply authentic, practical, spiritual practices into your life, as you cultivate some momentum with them, then you begin to elevate your consciousness. What does that mean? That means you begin to loosen your hold on yourself that you have on yourself. So basically what you're looking for is freedom from oneself. You're looking to get out of your own way, to set yourself free from your own self-made purgatory, as Mr. Spock said many years ago, okay? So what happens with that is as we begin to elevate in our consciousness, as we move through splashes of moments of freedom from ourselves, we notice the implications of that are that the definitions of, of self and other begin to kind of fall apart a little bit. Like there's not that much difference between you and me. And I begin to see that everything is made of those little dots and droplets of living awareness somehow that I was talking about in the meditation today. That you're made of that same stuff, your shirt's made of the same stuff, the chair you think you're sitting on is made of the same stuff, the air you think you're breathing is made of that same stuff. Everything is made of the same stuff. So these things all become kind of part of an everyday common experience that everything is made of the same stuff just through your spiritual practices. And as you move up in that, then you find that there's less of a distinction between male and female, me and you, and yesterday and today and tomorrow. Everything kind of becomes diffused into one, if you will, a, uh, a field of energy. We can call it a morphogenic field. Oneness is better. So now, within, within this state, as we move from being separate to transcendent, then at the edge, at the very edge of oneness, where there's no longer you or me or air or earth, when there's no witness, when you just touch eternity itself, just before that, all the apparent order, and I say apparent order, that we think of as a continuity to our lives, just washes out. The polarity, that generates the distinctions between you and the chair you're sitting on, or the air, the clothes you're wearing, this bell, and all this stuff. All of these frequencies, you could say, begin to lose their polarity. And there is what's called, in physics, it's called the randomity principle, or chaos theory, where 
at the highest reaches of consciousness, this order that we have disassembles, depolarizes itself, and there's just complete and total open canvas freedom where there's not a propensity to go here or there because there is no here or there yet. We haven't constructed time space. So there's just the wide open, complete bedlam of chaos. That's the highest reach of consciousness before you just lose any self-awareness and you move into the one. And people are going, oh no, really? That's what I'm looking for? That's what I want? Well, I, I can tell you as a musician with the violin, but more, more with the drums, there was such an order with hands and feet moving in both directions and, and cross learning how, how to be with people, you know, playing with musicians in, in relation to just a bigger field of creativity. I remember becoming the music. I remember doing the music as I was trying to do it and that felt her terrible. And then I just kind of blend in with it and I'm kind of grooving with it and it was just fun. Yeah, you're being the music a bit. But then you transcend that and kind of the music is just playing you. And when your skills are set up right, when you're polished enough, then it just takes over. And you're doing things that you can't do, but they just happen. This is creativity. This is raw creativity. From the chaos comes apparent order. See, when you set your mind up, when you set your skills up as a violinist, as a drummer, you know, a, a, as a carpenter, as a parent, it doesn't matter what you're doing. When you set your skill set up and you just embrace that chaos, then it refracts through you like you're a prism. And you're adjusted to your own personality. And then it comes out as this incredible rainbow of expression that only you can do. But that only happens when you're willing to let go of the illusion of the order that you think you have right now and the control over it. <laughs> right? You know, that's just ridiculous. You know, and the minute I think I'm in control of anything, it just explodes in my lap anyway. You know, right? It all falls apart, falls through your fingertips, however you want to see it. So perhaps the freedom that you're really looking for the creativity, the fulfillment that you're looking for in your personal lives, your professional lives, your spiritual life has to do with not trying to identify and make sense and figure anything out as much as it has to do with just the opposite of letting go of our need to understand, letting go of our need to do, to become, to try to understand, evolve, process, figure out, just you know, try letting go. All the different teachings from around the world will tell us that we must be like children to enter the kingdom. I've noticed that many of the things that I've shared with people throughout all these years, whether in Canada or Australia or California or Florida, it doesn't matter. I've noticed that the children get these ideas and experience these things. Not just get the ideas, because anyone can nod their head and say, yeah, Chris, got it. But when I'm talking and a bunch <laughs> of kids are in the room, people will they'll all say, oh yeah, well I hear that sound. And they'll, they'll look and say, oh yeah, I experienced that. I know what you're talking about. And then they'll say, well yeah, I see that all the time. And once you begin to explain to people what these experiences mean, See, when you're experiencing that everything is the grain-like texture, then you're showing them oneness as it expresses itself in duality. You're, you're proving to them, so the mind becomes your friend now, not your adversary, that everything is one. Everything is made of the exact same stuff. Everything is made of those droplets. Am I making sense? So that chaos, that randomity, then takes on form polarity, swarms of these droplets become all the things you think you're looking at right here, and they become your body. These same droplets that make up the chair are making up your blood right now. There's really no difference. There's really no difference. They're made of the same substance. Isn't that amazing to think about? The same quantum particles that make up the chair, that make up the air that we think is between 
where you and I think we are, is made of the same stuff. That's amazing. It's amazing and it's liberating because as you begin to realize and experience that all life is one, amidst your need to try to control and even navigate within the chaos, there's a willingness that you have to surrender into this field of energy, this living presence. And even though it doesn't appear to have an order, as I just surrender into it, guess what happens to this? This creativity, this raw dynamism of the presence of God, it just shines through me as it can only shine through me and becomes the living expression I will, I'll call the tapestry of my life. And whether that's how I play drums, how I play the violin, how I'm a dad, how I'm a grandpa, all of these things need to be beautiful and perfect expressions to the best and the depths of my abilities today, my willingness to surrender into this experience. So my practice to cultivate this is this sound, listening to the sound, gazing into the center light. And from that, I notice this presence that stirs inside me. That's been my practice since the mid-70s. And I don't practice it by sitting down and just doing it once or twice every day for 20 minutes or half an hour. When you do that, you're telling the universe that you're going to make God your neighbor. <laughs> see, I'm going to make God my neighbor. And when I'm going to go see my neighbor, I'm going to put on my clothes, straighten up a little bit. I don't want, God, I don't want the neighbor to really see how I am. So we go over. And you talk to the neighbor, glad that's over, and you come back. Or it's like going to church when you put on your nice church-going kind of clothes and you throw them back in the closet to next week. Right? No, no, no. I want you to do this inner light, this inner sound, this inner presence thing 20, 30, 40 times every day. Try it for a month. But you only do it about 10 seconds at a time. Every time you go to the washroom, you listen. Every time you reach for that refrigerator door, before you open it, you listen. When I get out of the truck, before I do get out of the truck, I listen. When I get into the truck, before I start it up, I listen. <coughs> what does this do? This incorporates this presence into all the aspects of your life. This welcomes this chaos, you could call it, the, the living presence of God into everything that you're doing throughout the entirety of the day. And after you do this, probably for all of you guys, just within a week, you won't have to do it anymore because it's just happening all the time. You want to hear the sound all the time. I've heard it all the time since 1976. And I can guarantee you it is not tinnitus. <laughs> Okay, it's not a medical condition. It's not because I've played too much loud rock music in the basement at mom's, okay, mom and dad's. No, no. It's, it's a different experience. It's a different experience because you're, you're not hearing with your ears. This sound, you don't hear it with your ears. You're listening with your heart. It has to do with turning your senses inside. And this grain-like texture, you think you're seeing it with your eyes open, but you're not. You're just looking in the room with your eyes. You're really seeing it with your heart. You listen with your heart. You see with your heart. We don't need to hear. We don't need to really look. We just need to see each other and really listen to each other. Does this make sense? It's a simple thing. And whether I'm doing my martial arts practice, whether I'm at the gym throwing numbers around, whether I'm lecturing, teaching, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, I'm always listening. Always listening. That's my target. That's the bullseye on the target throughout every moment of every day, all the years of my life. Everybody got that? Pretty simple. So chaos is your friend. If you're experiencing what you think order is, 
Don't worry, it'll change in just a moment. Okay? You know. You know. And the mind loves to keep things under control. The mind loves to keep things in order. And that's a good thing in many aspects in life. Let the mind become your ally, not your adversary. Don't wrestle with the mind. As you talk with yourself and make friends with yourself, don't set the mind up as the problem. Don't try to control the mind. Don't try to dominate your mind. Because here's a secret. It's only your mind trying to dominate your mind. Doesn't that sound kind of crazy? <laughs> right? You know? And I just remember the, the teachers in my life, whether it's my math teachers, whether it's my track or basketball coach, whether it was my drum teacher, my violin teacher, the big thing is just relax. Just relax. Stop thinking about it. Just let it all just happen. You know, and I remember Grandmaster Chung. Just, I study, I uh, study Kung Fu. And uh, Grandmaster Chung there in Palm Bay, is, what an amazing resource this guy is. You know, he'll, he'll just point out to me just by poking me, he's 74. And he's just an unbelievable presence. He just pokes at me and just says, you're way too stressed out. You're way too tight. And I think I'm just being loosey-goosey, you know, doing my things. And he just points out how I'm holding tension everywhere. And then he says, now touch me. And I touch him and it's like going into putty. But he says, you think, you think that's weak? And then before I can even blink my eyes, I'm on the floor. <laughs> and it's a hardwood floor, so it's not really a very pleasant experience, you know? But what we have to do is just learn how to relax. And part of relaxing is, is a redirection, perhaps, of our spiritual journey away from trying to understand ourselves, figure ourselves out, go through our processes, figure out our weaknesses, all this kind of stuff. Because haven't you all figured out that it's basically endless by now? Okay. Perhaps the key to the fulfillment that you're looking for at all levels of your life is simply an acceptance, an appreciation of your life, yourself, and everyone and everything all around you and don't say anything more than that. Don't say, oh, because it's all just perfect and it's wonderful and it's, no, no, just acceptance. Do you understand the difference? Right. Don't keep tagging on things. Just let it be acceptance, appreciation. Because then what comes is this beautiful embrace where you're no longer running from chaos. You embrace the open canvas this incredible pool of creativity and insight. And you can just dance with it rather than fight with it. You can dance with it rather than fight with it. That's the point. And we get there not by figuring ourselves out, but by letting go of the need to figure ourselves out. I know that often in these teachings throughout all these years that I, people have mentioned, well, you're teaching me the same things that you taught me 10 years ago. And I mentioned, well, when you get that, then maybe we'll do something else. <laughs> you know? And, and really, who am, I, who am I actually talking to? Me. So the things that I'm sharing with you today are the things that I most need to hear amidst the chaos and the tumult that's in, in the world and in, in my life, as things shifting and changing and all this going on, I need to remember to, to not resist it, to not be irritated by it, don't get grumpy, you know, at least not much. And <laughs> then just stop taking myself so seriously and just step forward. And what ties all this together is really this sound and this light and this presence. Because as I dwell within these experiences throughout each day, that is what's talked about in the New Testament when it says that you will do, you do these things and you'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
the house of the Lord is, a, is not a place you go to. It's not like going down to Miami and going to the Hilton or something. It's, it's a state of being that walks with you no matter what situation you're walking into, no matter what location you happen to be in. It's a presence that you cultivate and you enter into through your own work. Does this make sense? All right. So I want you to practice inner sound, inner light, inner presence, 10, 15 seconds at a time at most, 20, 30, 40 times a day. And I'll absolutely guarantee you, because I've been doing this a long, long time now, that if you do it just a short period of time, that you're going to notice that your life begins to change from the inside out. All of a sudden, things begin to improve, and you haven't done anything about those things. All of a sudden, old habits begin to fall away from you. Thought patterns and ruts that you can, seem to be stuck in are no longer present in your day-to-day -day life. How does that happen? Because you're now investing in a different series of frequencies. That investment accrues, then leverage happens, and boom, you're done. Authentic change happens from the inside out. I want to thank you for taking the time and the trouble to be here today. It's just wonderful to see you, and thank you for having me. And it was great to hear you play the music, ladies. I'd love to hear, hear some more. All right. Baraka Bashad, may the blessings be. Thank you very much. Shine your light out to the world Hold the vibration of love light amplified And let your love light shine And just be loved Let's all just be loved just be love. Let's all just be love, be love. In the dark of the night, when the moonlight shines on the trees, and the breeze whispers through the leaves. And the stars twinkle above all our heads That's the time just to be free And just be loved Why can't we just be loved Just be loved Let's all just be loved For every choice we make You can feel the love come shining through For every hand we take For every heart that's breaking We can heal with love just me and you
I'll flow wherever you go And let those people know With your love glow With your love glow With your love glow You got to be love To receive love You got to 